I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, what we're going to do is to look at Logic Pro's noise gate. What noise gates do is they determine whether or not we can hear audio by setting a threshold, and only bits of volume that exceed that threshold can be heard. Just in case that doesn't make sense, let's break that down a little bit more. Imagine making an audio recording where some parts of that recording are really loud and other bits are a little bit quieter. What gates do is to set what's called a threshold point, and provided the volume of the audio at a particular point gets loud enough, the gate will open and will hear the audio. If it's not loud enough, the gate doesn't open, and so those parts effectively become silent. And what noise gates are really good for is, well, all kinds of things. Let's have a listen to see what they can do on a beat loop. What I've got here is an audio file that I've imported from the loop library. Let's just have a listen to it. <laughs> Okay, you can see within the audio file that we've got some really loud moments of audio and some quieter bits. And we can also hear that um, after the initial impact of some hit, the audio just drops away in volume a little bit. So if we go to uh, the channel for this particular track and we set up the noise gate, which is in the dynamics section of Logic, this is where all the dynamics processes are, noise gates down here at the bottom. If we select this option, what we can see is the interface that appears for it. Let's just pop it over here for a moment. So we can see, first of all, on the left-hand side that we have this threshold detector. Now, at the moment, this is set at minus 50 decibels, and everything that's going to be happening within this audio file is going to be louder than that. So initially, we're not going to hear any difference. But as we start to increase the threshold so that we get closer to zero dB, any bits of audio that don't um, fall above this threshold point will begin to be filtered out of the sound. Let's just do that in real time. So now the only bits of audio we're hearing are the bits which exceed minus five decibels. And you can see up at the top here that we're getting this nice toggling effect showing us when the gate is open and when it's closed. What this is interesting for as well is that we're beginning to hear the kind of reverb that's inherent within this bit of audio. By closing this down, all of the reverb that's captured, which is a little bit quieter than the impacts that trigger it, are being filtered out from an audio point of view. So we're just not hearing those within the uh, track. Now, if we set this a little bit higher, we'll take this back up to 5 dB, we can begin to see that we've also got envelope controls that can be used within the noise gate as well. So at the moment, what's happening is we're getting this very percussive sound because the sound is being automatically detected at this attack point, but it's also being only, it's only going to release over 10 milliseconds. In other words, when the gate closes, it closes really quickly. Let's just turn that up a little bit and begin to hear what happens when we increase the release time. Now, if I increase the release time so much, up to a second we went to there, the, the gate doesn't have a chance to close before the next bit of audio is actually opening it again. So effectively, it's not doing anything anymore because the release time is keeping it open. But we can see that with the release time here, just around sort of 170 milliseconds or so, as the gate wants to close, we're just getting a slightly more musical, less punchy response to the way that the gate is working. So what we can do here with this noise gate is to see what happens when we set a threshold point and when we start working with these envelopes as well. However, there's another way that we can work with gates, which is really interesting too. What I'm going to do is to unmute the second track within my project here, which is this little pad sound. I'm just going to solo it so we can hear it by itself. Okay, so just hearing it through twice there, you can hear that it's got this long sort of wash, this big release tail, the decay takes a long time for the sound to disappear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a noise gate on the second sound as well. Again, it's gonna be up here at the top of my most recent items because I've just put a noise gate on the beat loop. So I'm going to select the option here. So this is the noise gate that's on my pad and this is the one that's on the drums. 
Now what I can do, I'm going to close the one on the drums for the moment. What I can do is to come to the top right hand window of this uh, noise gate that's on the pad sound. and I can select what's called a side chain input. And what this is going to do is instead of simply detecting the sound, the volume of the sound that I've put the noise gate on, it's going to look elsewhere for the trigger, for whether or not the gate should be opened or closed. So if I select from the audio this beat loop on the first track, what's now going to happen is that this noise gate on the pad is going to take its cues about whether or not it should be open or closed from the drums, which means that the sound is going to be gated, the pad is going to be gated from the drum sound. Let's have a listen to those two things together. <laughs> Now you can hear that something interesting is happening here, which is that obviously the noise gate choices that I make on the drum loop have an implication for what happens on the pad. If I gate the drums really hard, there are fewer bits of audio that come through to the noise gate on the pad to actually trigger it. Whereas if I open that drum sound up by increasing the release time and dropping the threshold, more of that drum loop is playing and therefore more bits of the pad are opened up and heard. So we can create this really interesting musical relationship when we work with noise gates in this way. So we've begun to see that within this video, with noise gates, we can do two really interesting things. We can take a sound by itself and we can set a threshold above which audio has to exceed volume in order for that sound to be heard. But we can also begin to see within this video that we can make noise gates interact with each other across different sounds to create some really interesting musical effects.